Okay, we can start the webinar now. So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. That is the session two of the study and work in Japan series. Uh, we are thrilled to have you here for this informative webinar on studying and working in Japan. So, my name is Vaishnavi Thakur and I'm currently pursuing a PhD program in the Department of uh, Electrical Engineering in the University of Tokyo. And today assisting me as sub facilitator is Ms. Sakshi Verma. Uh, today's webinar aims to promote education in Japan and inspire students to consider pursuing higher studies. Uh, so this is organized by the University of Tokyo India office and today we have gathered experts from various universities across Japan who will provide valuable information and guidance on the diverse programs offered in the institutions. So Japan boasts the third largest economy globally and it offers tremendous opportunities for skilled professionals. But surprisingly, uh, despite its exceptional employment rate, many students still opt for Western countries for their higher education. So we believe that this is primarily because of the lack of awareness about the incredible opportunities and quality of life that Japan has to offer. So there, additionally, there are a few misconceptions as well, uh, which today Ms. Kushi, a student of the Keio University, will present in her presentation. And through these webinars, we aim to bridge the information gap and provide, and provide accurate answers to the questions you have. So if you have any queries, please post them in the Q&A portal. And today our panelists and university representatives are ready to address them. So now when we look at the agenda slide, uh, we have, we'll have a brief overview of the sessions by Ms. Sakshi, who is the assistant manager of the University of Tokyo India office. And following that, we have presentations from representatives of various universities. So each university will present for about 20 minutes, which is followed by a five minute Q&A session. So without any further ado, let's kickstart this webinar and uh, it would be my pleasure to invite Ms. Sakshi, the program assistant, the assistant manager of the University of Tokyo India office to give us more insights into these uh, webinars. Thank you for the introduction, uh, Ms. Vaishnavi. So konnichiwa, good afternoon and namaste everyone. My name is Sakshi Roy and this program is hosted by the University of Tokyo India office and brought to you by MEXT the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology in Japan. So um, I would like to welcome all uh, other experts from world-class Japanese universities and attendees from different parts of the world. So thank you very much for taking out time to participating in this webinar. So I'll start with a brief introduction about our office. So our office um, is a part of study in Japan Global Network Project in Southwest Asia by MEXT and we provide um, kind of assistance to Indian students to pursue the higher studies in Japan. And we also organize this education fairs and seminars throughout India. So uh, we have been conducting this uh, webinar series of study uh, and work in Japan from the last two years. And our webinars are basically designed to introduce you to some of the best Japanese universities um, uh, we'll be discussing the various program offerings and opportunities to study and work in Japan. So there will be uh, three to four uh, Japanese universities representing in each session, national, public and private universities. And all the universities are basically focusing to introduce uh, the English-based programs and scholarship opportunities that are offered by them. So uh, I'll tell you, Japan has uh, some of the best universities in the world and approximately there have been 700 plus universities as well as specialized vocation institutions. So if you consider Japan uh, as your study destination, you'll study in a well-rounded education and uh, experience a unique new culture. And also uh, you have so many options to choose from world-class universities. Uh, I'll tell you the academic options uh, for international students are nearly boundless in Japan. So after graduating from the Japanese university, you'll be truly valuable in the job market, not only in Japan, but in other countries as well. So uh, today I request all of you to please stay tuned with us till the end of the session and join our future webinars to learn about uh, world-renowned Japanese universities and their offerings. And I recommend you all to please, uh, you know, uh, listen to each and every presentation very carefully and please note down uh, their contact addresses of respective universities and then you can, you can, you know, uh, directly contact them in case if you have any questions. So thank you very much for paying attention and we hope uh, you'll definitely enjoy the experience and receive a beneficial information from our webinars. So please enjoy today's session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Sakshi, for sharing, sharing such valuable information. Your insights are undoubtedly, uh, they will guide the prospective students in making informed decisions. So now let's proceed with the university presentations. Let me share the agenda slide once again. 
So today we are joined by four very renowned universities in Japan. So starting with the University of Tokyo, uh, it's established in 1877 and it's a public research university located in Tokyo. It holds a reputation of being the most selective and prestigious university in Japan. Uh, we, we have notable alumni and faculty members and researchers from the University of Tokyo who have gone to become prime ministers and uh, there are about 70 Nobel Prize laureates and five astronauts and uh, many medalists. So the university is globally recognized for its contributions to research and education, co uh, collaborating with other leading universities in the world. So today we are honored to have Professor Nishizawa from the Graduate School of Public Policy at the University of Tokyo to present on behalf of the, of the university. Uh, you can share your presentation now, Professor. I think Nubuya San, can you please assist in sharing the presentation? I think uh, it would be better. Can you see the screen? Uh, it's not actually clear. It's not. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I think it should be okay now. Uh, yes, I'm trying to share. Do you see the slide? No. Should, should, shall I do you that? Slide now? Uh, sorry, Professor. No. So no. may, maybe let me do that. Everything and... becomes very slow. Sorry, there's some so, technical so trouble. Could, could you, uh, could you yes, please? no problem. I think Nobuya san can share the screen. Mm. So you, so you can stop sharing. Okay. Sorry, that well, <laughs> what? Uh, The program is not responding. That is the reason. So let, let me do you see the slide now? Uh no, we cannot see the oh, slides. Okay. I okay. want Could to you close stop sharing. Share. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, okay. that's good. Sorry uh for this trouble. Uh, always I don't know this happens. So my name is Toshiro Nishizawa from University of Tokyo Graduate School of Public Policy. Um oh uh, so uh <laughs> Um, University of Tokyo is, is uh, the oldest university uh, uh, in Japan, uh, almost uh, 150 years history. And uh, our school, a graduate school of public policy, is the um, youngest graduate school uh, in University of Tokyo. We have, uh, University of Tokyo have 15 graduate schools, and uh, our school, graduate school of public policy, was established in 2004, the youngest one. And so I'm going to talk about uh, my our school and our program, uh, focusing on uh, one of the programs, uh, um, English-based uh, program called Master of International uh, Master of Public Policy International Program. I see the slide, but uh, is this properly shown? Do you see the slide now? Uh, yes, Professor, we can see these slides. Okay, okay. So uh, our school is, um, well, this program, I'm focusing on this particular program. We call it MPPIP. And by the way, our school uh, is Graduate School of Public Policy. We call our, cell, uh, our school GRASP, GRASP. And students, faculty members, alumni are GRASPers. So GRASP's MPPIP, Master of International, uh, Public Policy International Program, is a, is a, a course uh, based in English. So you can earn master degree solely by taking courses taught in English. And um, next slide, please. So we aim to help students build a foundation of professional knowledge and practical skills for their successful career development as a public policy 
professionals. When I say public policy professional, this does not necessarily mean that uh, we help children to become civil servants. Whoever uh, in both the public and private sector want to, to specialize in public policy, even the private sector people um, gain from knowledge in public policy. So we, we, we support uh, whoever interested in public policy. And uh, we offer, last year we offered 126 courses for, in English. Next slide, please. I'm going to talk about three unique features of our um, school and our program multidisciplinary and practic practical orientation and student diversity on the global networks. Next slide, please. Multidisciplinary. We have three pillars, law, political science, economics, in our curriculum. Why? Because at least three disciplines you see in front of you are uh, basis for public policy design, implementation, analysis, whatever. So we, um, our curriculum is designed making these three, three disciplines as a pillars. Next slide, please. Another reason of our program's multidisciplinarity is I show this uh, this uh, cartoon every time. You are looking for solutions. You are looking for something new. Mm. If you have only one lamp post, it might be not easy to find solutions or anything you want to find. When you lost your keys, multiple lamp posts give you a better chance to find your lost keys. So this is uh, another reason why we have three academic disciplines uh, at the pillars of our curriculum. Next slide, please. Just uh, some examples courses uh, we offer. Basic economics, macro, micro, macro, statistics, et econometrics, law and political sciences. There are a few um, basic courses. Of course, you can take course, courses offered by other graduate schools because University of Tokyo has 15 graduate schools. Some of the schools offer courses in English. So you may be able to take some courses offered by other graduate schools. Next slide, please. Practical orientation is a second feature, unique feature of our program. Basics, apply topics, case studies, and practical training. Basics, you've seen all these uh, uh, basic courses in three academic disciplines. We offer courses on applied topics. Next slide, please. Examples of elective courses on applied topics. Law and society in East Asia, new dimensions of security in the risk age, Japan's modernization experience and its ODA policy and so on and so forth. These are examples of elective courses on applied topics. So next slide, please. Examples of case studies and practical training courses. Case study, Japanese foreign economic policy, case study, international intellectual property management. And very practical training, how to write 
academic papers, presentation discussions, social design and global leadership. Next slide, please. Another feature of practical uh, orientation, current and former policy practitioners from government or from business sector, they share their professional knowledge and experience. Some of the courses offered by these um, faculty members are listed here. The third one, case study public partnership. This is a course, one of the courses I offer. And this is um, um, uh, a live consulting project with external clients, so-called capstone project. So we invite professionals, um, experts from uh, outside the campus, and uh, they give you the assignment, give a student assignment. And with the, with the support, I offer the students write consulting report. And then external clients, evaluate the deliverables. So next slide, please. Student diversity and global networks is the third feature, unique feature of our program. Gender balance is perfect, half and half. Female 53%, male 47%. And nationality, this is also half and half, 53% of students or international students, and the rest are Japanese. Every year, we have students from around 30 countries, all over, from all over the world. And we have had students from 65 countries so far. Next slide, please. Um, this is application, about application. MPPI applicants, applicants for a uh, Master of Public Policy International Program are required to choose one of the two policy streams and are expected to demonstrate basic competence in learning law, political sciences, and economics. One policy stream is economic policy finance development, more focused on economics. The other one, public management and in, uh, international relations. So um, courses, uh, course requirements, um, um, completion requirement, uh, slightly different in line with the focus of the policy screen. Next slide, please. Screening process, two stage. First comes document screening for all applicants. And then, after screening, the successful applicants will move to the next stage, oral examination. So we um, have a two-stage screening process. And we want to know, we want to know applicant's background and applicant's motivation to apply for MPPIP. And of course, what you want to study at class. And also, for looking, we would like to know how learning at GRASP, our school, will help you a future career development. When you prepare um, application um, documents, please take these into account. We would like to know all these, uh, uh, we like to have information on these uh, points. The reason is, we want to, to, um, we want to um, make judgment whether our program will help you, your future career development or not. I don't want to have a um, mismatch. So we carefully evaluate whether the applicants uh, will gain from coming to our school. Next slide, please. Scholarship opportunities. Um, you should um, you should uh, check our website from time to time because scholarship uh, programs might change. Uh, the condition might be different from 
the, the past year. So you need to check occasionally. But basically, we have uh, six uh, scholarship programs, opportunities for students, for students. UT, U Tokyo Fellowship, University of Tokyo have a few slots of fellow uh, scholarships. Next sponsored scholarship. This is not uh, the uh, different from uh, embassy recommended um, uh, next scholarship. This is a special location from next to our um, school. We have few slots um, of uh, scholarships. ADB, Asian Development uh, Bank Sponsor Scholarship, IMF Sponsor Scholarship, JICA Sponsor Scholarship, and World Bank Sponsor Scholarship. All these scholarships come from different eligibility requirements and conditions. So you should check carefully if you're interested in scholarship, what are the eligibility requirements and the conditions? Okay, next slide, please. We have had 18 excellent students from India since 2011. 2011 is the second year of our uh, international program. We started the international program in 2010. And since 2011, we have excellent students from India, but only 18. We like to have more from India. All these um, uh, students, um, I remember them quite well, excellent students. Uh, and they are back in the country and work as public policy professionals. Next slide, please. So I will show the video later. Uh, let me finish my part. Oh, the last, <laughs> last page. <laughs> Uh, Kushi san, can you share the video? Uh, before video, there's another thing. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, well, th this is just a photo of uh, our campus, but uh, the last one is um, somewhat important. <laughs> the last page. Yeah, this is also our campus, Red Gate, symbol of University of Tokyo. This is a beautiful uh, fall, uh, ginkgo trees. Yes. I want you to check uh, our website. Sorry, there's no link to our website, but uh, another on our website, we have the, the section called the Grasper's uh, Voice, and you can find uh, the articles, essays uh, written by our students, alumni, and faculty members. So you, you can learn uh, our people, the, the, know our people from that website. And inquiry, please. Uh, send email to uh, our MPPI desk. So this is my part. Thank you very much. So, so we can play the video now. If yep, that's okay, professor. I'm just a minute. I'm trying to play the video. Um, actually, I'm not allowed to share the sound of the video. Uh, I think it's okay. Then maybe we can go to Q and I question. I mean, question and answers during the yeah. session. Okay. Uh, so, Professor, we have a few questions from the students who are interested to study in the university. Uh, a student wants to know: Are there any opportunities to work and study simultaneously? Uh, yes. Um... Some students um, do work, um, but uh, if you um, receive the scholarships, the, the, some scholarships do not allow students to have full-time work. Yeah, and the paid, uh, even paid internship is not allowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, depending on when you uh, receive scholarship, it depending on, depends on the scholarship conditions. I see. Okay. Thank you, Professor. And there is another student who wants to know the fee structure. So uh, how much does the tuition fee cost every year? Well, it is, uh, that sum, it was about what, 500, uh, 000, 5, 000? Um, 
yes. So it is usually all the graduate school programs in the university, they cost the same. It is in, in the range of 500, uh, 5,000 to $6,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very inexpensive compared with some of the universities in the um, United States or Europe. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. Extremely. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is one of the advantages which students can take by coming and studying in Japan. Yes, and living cost is quite reasonable. <laughs> mm -hmm, that's true. Even with some inflation these days. Yeah. And also we have many government uh, benefits as well, so which students can take away of. Yes. Uh, there's another question, Professor. So do students need to have exceptionally good marks to be selected? <laughs> <laughs> of course. But, but not just um, academic performance. Yeah, mm -hmm. as I mentioned that we would like to know whether our, school, our program can help the students' uh, professional development. So motivation is very important. Uh, of course, uh, better academic record helps, but uh, without good motivation and future plan, uh, professors might think, well, this person is not necessarily suitable for our program, right? Oh, yes, that's right. So, so, so statement purpose is very, very important. You should tell yourself, uh, yes, that's right. So adding on to that, Professor, so I think, uh, like you said, the statement of purpose, if a student is able to show his passion for the research or what he's going to do, so that will what makes him get connected to the professors. Yes, but not only passion. <laughs> <laughs> Applicants should convince, oh, yes, yes, this is a uh, good motivation. And uh, this person has a very uh, well thought out plan and pros promising uh, youth. Or, or age doesn't matter, so it doesn't need to be young, but uh, yes, motivation. And uh, well, uh, I want the applicant to convince us. Yes, uh, that's right. And also, especially University of Tokyo has very notorious reputation regarding the professors uh, getting back to the students. So most of the students ask, the professors are not replying, what do I do? <laughs> No, 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 is that a question? Someone. Uh, it's it's not in one of these questions, but usually <laughs> we come across it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so so what is <laughs> so notorious? Is that the <laughs> uh, well? Um, faculty members want to support if uh, the person has a, the very very strong motivation and uh, uh, want to achieve something and. Uh, encourage students to think by themselves don't copy something from somewhere yeah the think deeply uh, and create something innovative that is very important we encourage students to have such a mindset uh, thank you professor so one last question i would like to take is uh, a student wants to know if it's compulsory to learn japanese to study uh, in the grasp so no. how much Japanese should we know? No, no, you don't need to have any Japanese language school. Of course, uh, if you um, come to join us, you spend two years at least. And it, it is worthwhile learning survival Japanese. We offer, um, you Tokyo offer a free Japanese language uh, classes uh, for survival. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and some other schools have a, uh, or offer Japanese courses for for academic um, writing something. So uh, I would encourage uh, whoever join our uh, University of Tokyo to learn some Japanese. Yeah, but but it is not necessary in order to to earn master degree. Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you for joining us today and for sharing very comprehensive presentation. So it was very informative and I hope students will take the benefit of it. So thank you, thank you once again. Yeah. Sorry for the trouble, technical trouble. Maybe uh, the batteries uh, is lost. I have some trouble here, so <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, please uh, 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 take a look at our website. There are a lot of information, uh, including video. Yes, thank you very yes. much. Thank you.
thank you, Professor. And I think students have a few more questions uh, in the chat box. So the University of Tokyo panel can look into it. And also, if there are any links which you would like uh, students to save, please post them in the chat box. And we can proceed with the next presentation. Let me share the agenda slide. So can I start? Uh, one second, Professor. Oh, yeah, so you should, okay. uh, so we will act, we'll have a presentation by Ms. Kushi, uh, a student of the University of uh, Keio University. So to share her experience of uh, student experience. So after that, we'll proceed with the Yokohama National University. Okay. Yes, thank you, Professor. So uh, Kushi-san, it's up to you, thank you. Um, thank you, YNU, for allowing me to present uh, before your university. Um, I'll share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Yes. I think today many of the students have questions regarding the scholarships and the programs offered in Japan. So I think, I hope my presentation kind of gives you some clarity as to the study and work life in Japan. So yes, a very good evening to all the panelists and attendees. Uh, I'm Kushi Javedi, and today I'll be talking about the study and work life in Japan. So uh, firstly, I'll talk a little about myself. Um, I was raised in Tokyo, and I'm currently in the Faculty of Environment and Information Studies at Keio University. I am a recipient of the private scholarship uh, for three years, and I have also received the Keio University's research grant for my personal project. And I have work experience at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, um, Mitsubishi Fuso, and the US Japan Council. So, um, why should you choose Japan as your destination to pursue further studies? Firstly, uh, Japan is the third largest economy in the world with a population of 126 million. It is a member of the G7 and the G20 summit with other developed countries. Japan ranks ninth in the Global Peace Index and has topped the Safe Cities Index for the third consecutive time. Uh, there are a range of international cuisines available, such as Indian, Italian, and Japanese, and also culturally appropriate food. Um, being a vegetarian myself, I can assure you that you'll find vegetarian options in Japan. Health policies have proved to be very beneficial to international students, as 70% of the costs are paid by the government. So Japanese universities are categorized into national that are founded by the Japanese government, public that are laid by local public entities and private that are funded by private organizations and universities. 77% of the universities in Japan are private, but in terms of reputation, national, public and private universities are equally valued. In Japan, undergraduate programs are for four years, graduate for one or two years, depending on the program you're applying for, but usually it is two years, and PhD or doctoral programs are for three years. The English programs in Japan are well-renowned as they provide a range of degrees at a very affordable price compared to countries like Canada and the US. Besides professional growth, uh, Japanese universities also focus on personal growth as students also excel in extracurriculars and have the freedom to create or initiate anything that they wish to do. Uh, universities provide services like career support and counseling, and also facilities like libraries, gymnasiums, and research labs. The fee structure, I'm sure, is undoubtedly an important aspect, so I'll elaborate a little on this topic. So I believe Japan is one of the most affordable countries to pursue further studies as the tuition fee for international students and domestic students is the same. So as you can see from this chart, uh, the tuition fee of public universities in the US is eight times more expensive and private universities in the US is six times more expensive. So most of the international students in Japan also receive financial assistance in the form of internal or external scholarships. I have also listed a couple of basic documents that most of the universities require when you're applying. For more details, uh, I would recommend you to check the application guidelines of the program you wish to enroll in. And you can also contact the admissions office. 
in order to apply to the master's or the PhD courses, it is crucial for the applicant to contact the supervisor of the program for admission assistance. So the job opportunities in Japan are countless and there are several benefits that come along once you work here. Graduates from Japanese universities usually tend to work for multinational companies um, such as Amazon, Google, and Toyota. Graduates, especially from an engineering background, have a great scope in Japan. The average salary after graduation is minimum 3 million per year, which is around 17 to 20 lakh rupees. Uh, Japan also has the lowest unemployment rate, which is 2.34%, and visa procurement is not very tedious. The student visa is usually upgraded to working visa if the student is able to find a job within Japan. And also, once you graduate from here, you, they give you about two to three months to look for a job. So your visa is also valid then. So the number of dispositions for employment purposes from international students has been escalating over the years. 2019 witnessed double the capacity of international students than in 2017. There is a 50% increase in the number of students and professors coming from the overseas. This increase, I guess, is primarily because of the job prospects and internship opportunities. So another very interesting and distinct feature of Japan is the opportunity to experience various seasons. Compared to other countries, Japan does not experience harsh climates. I apologize for the background, um, but yes, continuing to the presentation. Um, Compared to other countries, Japan does not experience harsh climates. You can experience different seasons in the country, like the famous cherry blossoms in spring or the foliage in autumn. And you can also travel across the country and experience different climates. So lastly, I'll talk a little about my student life in Japan. So from my personal experience, I can certainly say that my university has opened doors to several unexpected but very worthwhile opportunities as you can see in these pictures, from attending baseball events and participating in hackathons and clubs, every experience has been unique and memorable in its own way. Also, students are supposed to join labs, which in Japan is called Kinkyukai, in where students gain hands-on experience in their field of interest. They can work on a project or research that they are interested in, and you will work under a professor who will guide you with your research. So to sum up, uh, I highly recommend students to consider studying in Japan as it will certainly be a fruitful experience and you would not have to spend a lot on education. So this brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope I was able to give students and parents an insight into the study and work life in Japan. And I hope to see you all soon in Japan. So yes, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kushi, for your presentation. Uh, let's proceed with the next university. So next we have uh, Yokohama National University who is going to uh, uh, give a brief uh, introduction about why to pursue civil engineer. We have Professor Takayuki Suzuki, Takayuki Suzuki from the Institute of Urban Innovation uh, to explain us why, uh, why do we have to choose civil engineering in the Yokohama National University. Uh, over to you, Professor. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Takayu Suzuki. So I'm going to uh, introduce our university and in uh, my program, the civil engineering program. Uh, now the slide should be okay. So I'm going to start the, my presentation. So this is uh, today's contents. First uh, half, maybe I'll talk about uh, my university, Yokohama National University, and a lot about uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, my department, Department of Civil Engineering, and then the Graduate School of Arab Innovations. <clears throat> All right, so first, my university. So first, I talk about uh, my university location, research, education facilities, and then the fees and careers. And then the uh, location of uh, uh, Yokohama National University is, is located in the Kanto area, this part. And then uh, in Zoom, uh, like this, then Haneda is here, Narita is here, and Yokohama is located here, about 30 minutes from the central Tokyo. <laughs> so about Yokohama, uh, the population is 3.7 million. This is the second largest uh, city in Japan. And then uh, lots of tourists is coming to Yokohama area, like uh, 36 million per year. And then uh, there was only last uh, 50 years. And then, as I mentioned, 30 minutes from Tokyo Station. <clears throat> 
And then our university, we had a five principles, uh, be active, be innovative, and be open and be global. And from this year, we added one more principle that is be diverse. <clears throat> so here is a photo from the uh, of Yokohama. You can see the green area. This whole area is uh, our university, Yokohama National University. The center of Yokohama is looking at the upper side here, and then you can see the bay, this is uh, Yokohama Bay. So from here, Central of Yokohama to Yokohama, our, our university is about the three kilometers, and it takes about the three minutes by bus. <clears throat> maybe, maybe 20, 20 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to show the uh, numbers of uh, our university, YNU. Our, our university started from 1874, and in the undergrad and graduate schools, uh, students are uh, in added 10,000 students here. And in the 800 international students, uh, you know, uh, studying in my university, in my university, and they have five colleges and six graduate schools. I will uh, explain about these in later. And then uh, for 600 full-time faculty and 140 uh, international partner universities. <clears throat> So here, uh, uh, in our university, we had, uh, as I mentioned, uh, graduate school and then undergraduate school, but uh, we also have two research institutes. One is the Institute of Advanced Sciences, and then uh, one, the other is uh, the Disciplinary Sciences. So these are some in, in, uh, graduate students are also joined to this institute. <clears throat> So here, from here, I talk about the education. So in this is important in solving the actual and the real world problems in our university and then off, uh, offer the practical educations. And then also the more importance is that we want to contribute both in the local and the global society. <laughs> and then from the next, I show the five graduate undergrad colleges and six graduate schools. So one is a uh, graduate school of education. So the, this is, uh, you know, in our university also have a grad uh, education and then they have become like uh, uh, teachers in elementary school, uh, junior high school, and high schools. <clears throat> so next one is that uh, uh, we have the grad College of Business Administration and the College of Economics, and they both hold a uh, graduate school of international uh, social sciences. <clears throat> And then next is that uh, engineering, so College of Engineering Science, and then uh, they have a graduate school of uh, engineering and science. So the engineering science hold the all the uh, education in English in uh, graduate schools. <clears throat> so next is that uh, our College of Other Innovation, Other Science, and then the graduate school of Other Innovations. I belong to the, this Other Innovation here, and we, uh, this uh, graduate school also have uh, uh, education in English. <clears throat> So you have two more graduate schools, that is a graduate school of environment and information sciences, and the other is uh, the graduate school of innovative and practical studies. So, you know, the college of engineering science or college of other sciences students are, uh, uh, some students move to these uh, graduate schools. <clears throat> And then, as I mentioned, that uh, we are uh, focusing on not only the global uh, problems, also, but uh, also the local problems. And then we, we also have some uh, programs that uh, we have local exchange subjects for the undergraduate students, and then also the community creative studies for the graduate students. From the next, I'll show some examples. <clears throat> So here's uh, some examples of the, those projects. The uh, the Cotton Harbor neighborhood projects, or the New Town projects, or mobility design projects. So these are kind of uh, related to some engineering this uh, engineering part, but not only the engineering part. We also have some uh, cultural part that is a lifestyle to enjoy nature in the city project, or uh, the uh, outreach project. So these are the kind of a cultural part. <clears throat> So from the next, I talk about the English programs. So we had a master's and doctoral programs, those have English programs. The master program, we have international development engineering. So and in the IMP, I've let, uh, talked to later, this is the infrastructure management program. And there is an infrastructure, inf, international infrastructure uh, program. These are the uh, English program in master programs. And for doctoral programs, sorry. The doctor programs, they have lots of inter uh, in English courses. And then also the all uh, in the uh, graduate school of engineering science are offered all in English. <clears throat> And also we have some exchange programs that are joint programs and then some students could, with the partner uh, universities, we could exchange you know, six or three months. Uh, this is one of the program we have. 
And then from here, I talk about the facilities that should support. So we had uh, one uh, central libraries, uh, the picture is this one here, the right hand side, and this is inside a, a, a laboratory, and these are laboratories. And then we also have a student center. So if there are some problem, you can just come here and then the, some Ivanese officers will support you. <clears throat> And then cafeteria and shops here, and then we have four dormitories like here. So we had more than 600 rooms available. So most of the international students are living in these dormitories, but uh, some students are rent by uh, rent to some apartment or house in the nearby. And then the, some students also are uh, living in the near the uh, near the university by renting by themselves. And then we also support some Japanese, uh, you know, all the programs are in Japanese, but. Uh, <coughs> As the University of Tokyo professor mentioned that uh, we need some, uh, you know, for the survival, we need some Japanese skills. So we will offer the, some uh, free Japanese classes. And then also we had a tutor system. So each student have a tutor and then they will support uh, your uh, student life and their living life. And we also have some uh, support group that is 105 or ISL. Although they have some uh, groups and then they have some problem, we can just come here and then talk with uh, not only Japanese, but also the international students. So this one is a fee and careers. Uh, as uh, previously uh, explained, already explained, but in Japan that uh, uh, fees are very really, uh, econo uh, economical compared to the US or UK universities. And then the uh, uh, Yokohama National University, the national university, the state university is much uh, you know, economical compared to the private universities in Japan. <clears throat> and for careers, it's uh, very dependent on the uh, department. So some, uh, some uh, department uh, have some, uh, you know, going to the some companies, but uh, some are difficult. So it depends on uh, graduate schools or some uh, topics. But uh, nowadays in Japan, we also get, try to hire the international students. So uh, at least some uh, Japanese skills may be needed for getting a job in Japan. <laughs> okay, from here, I talk about the uh, Department of Civil Engineering and then Graduate School of Arab Innovation. So I'm a civil engineer and belong to the civil engineering department. I'll talk about these three uh, topics. So here, the first is fulfilling the pro education program. So this is a graduate school of innovation. So I belong to the, this one, so Department of Infrastructure and Our Society. So we have three uh, grad, uh, sub, three uh, categorized area, and then you also have English uh, pro programs. And for doctor program, we have one department that is a Department of Urban Innovation. So these are numbers of our departments, financial department. We have five research fields and in the undergrad is about 200, master and PhD and 140. So in the master and the PhD students, more than half are international students. <clears throat> So here uh, we had five uh, research groups, uh, uh, bridge structure, extreme coastal, geotech and transportation and concrete. I'll show you one by one. <clears throat> So this one is a bridge and structure engineering. The five faculty members belong to here. So keywords in below, uh, structure engineering and wind engineering and st structure dynamics. These are the top uh, topics of this field. So these are some examples of research topics, some fixtures and then some comments here. So they, since they have a, a wind tunnel that is a, a maybe there in Japan, but they hold the two uh, wind tunnel in our, uh, in our university and then they do a lot of experiment like this picture here. And then they also have doing some numerical simulation beyond, uh, related to the uh, wind. <clears throat> and then also the cables in the big bridge, uh, long bridges. And this is actually in a course of engineering. I am belong to this uh, lab and uh, I'm a professor here. And then the, uh, two more uh, faculty members belong to this lab. And then the, uh, in this group, the keywords are course of engineering and then course of processes and also color remote sensing and then course of hazard. These are the uh, keywords of uh, my lab. So my lab is uh, doing uh, two large topics. One is protecting the land and people from the natural disasters. So most of the course of problems are related to the uh, disaster. So we're doing some research work related to this. And then the other is that uh, environmental restoration of a coast and external lakes. So not only the like a hard structure problem, but we also have some problem in water quality that matter. So we also uh, cover in both two, uh, two topics here. So the supervision environment and management, these are the, uh, some contents of our program. program.
So thirdly, the geotech and the geo uh, environmental engineering, the three professors related to here. So keywords are geotech, uh, geo geomechanics and the geotechnical engineering, and then uh, tunnel engineering. <clears throat> So they're doing not only the lab experiment like this, and then also have some small scale experiment, this is railway uh, problems. And then also they have, uh, uh, they are doing that, uh, like a tunnel ex uh, <coughs> experiment. And then also they have got the, the data set from the field. This is a tunnel one. And then they are doing some analysis. <clears throat> So this one is a uh, uh, group four is transportation of uh, engineering and then three professors are uh, belong to here and the keywords are urban regional planning and the disaster risk reduction and then the housing so uh, compared to the last three uh, uh, groups uh, this is a little bit uh, different uh, these are a little bit doing more like uh, interview survey or uh, like uh, putting some uh, GPS in the, uh, like this kind of train and they see what happens so those are the, their fields so they are doing the safety and smoothness for road, road traffic. This is the bottom of the maybe keywords. And then amber transportation, considering the habitation, uh, habitation and then the environment. And then the, also the urban and then regional planning. So the civil engineering also need to have this kind of, you know, topic in our <coughs> topics. And then the, we hold this lab. And the final one is concrete engineering. There are three professors uh, 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 belong to this. And the keywords here, like uh, uh, fracture mold, fagia, and then also concrete and the march channel transport. So they are doing the lots of things related to concrete. So this is the research field of their uh, group. And then structure uh, mechanics, like a uh, lab experiment here, and the material development. So they are doing lots of material to use a more like a different types of the concrete. And then also the uh, durability, and then also the extreme conditions using numerical simulations. <clears throat> Uh, from here and the uh, safe and secure running environment is also we have and then we have this kind of lab station uh, lab flatteries and then we do lots of rocks. So the second I talk about the only program. <clears throat> So in our department, the civilian department, lots of international students are, are enrolled to our university and every year. So nowadays, uh, like more than 25 international students are coming to our lab. As I mentioned, we have two programs, like uh, one is master program for two years and a doctor program for three years. <coughs> and then credits are here, like uh, 40 credits, eight credits, and then in total 22. And then here is a uh, 10 credits for the uh, PhDs. And then there are lots of uh, international uh, scholarships that existed. One is a uh, mixed, that is a Japanese government scholarship. And then we have uh, we have selected two uh, programs, one for civil and de uh, de develop civil and development, and also the civil at uh, ICT and IoT. So every year we had uh, nine nine PhDs and then two masters are selected from this mix. Every year uh, we have uh, deadlines uh, uh, December. So please check our website. And then next is at the JICA, uh, is a scholarship. There are lots of JICA, pro JICA scholarship existed like a JDS, or RBA initiative, SDGs, a lot. So these are the also we uh, accept the uh, scholarships. And then some also students get their scholarship from JICA and come into our lab. And then the other is the infrastructure management program, this is what we call IMP. This is uh, supported by World Bank. And then this is the only master program in two years. And then the, uh, we, you, and, it needs some uh, working uh, duration to, uh, to, <clears throat> to submit this uh, program. Okay, in a, these are the activities and uh, uh, in our civil engineering. So we have some parties, we can party. And then also, as I mentioned, they have some class. We also manage the one uh, Japanese class for international students. And they're also doing some, uh, this is a shuji, it's like a, you know, Pencil, uh, like a uh, pen and then writing Japanese and then also some discussions and then sorry and then also uh, we bring the, the international student to the uh, site for the technical tours and the last I uh, talk about worldwide connections <clears throat> So we have lots of agreement uh, between the universities. So uh, not only uh, uh, in, uh, to India, but also we have lots of international collaborations and agreements. So also the all the professors have a connection with the universities. Also that's that's why not only Japan but some uh, topics are also related to the overseas professors. 
And also we have some uh, double degree programs. So I'm not sure about, I'm not really sure about the uh, Indian in universities, but uh, uh, we try to have a double degree program uh, uh, to increase the double degree pro programs from now. <clears throat> All right, all right, so finally I talk about the admissions. So the in English pros and all the uh, <coughs> information uh, you can get from the, this website here, just you can check the YNU and the IUI, and then all English programs is, uh, uh, the button is in the middle here. So once you can uh, check this site, uh, you can see the, all the English program in our uh, uh, graduate school. So this is one of the example of the schedule. So as I mentioned, for the next scholarship, that submission is uh, uh, the middle of December. After that, the screening is started. And then finally, we, uh, we'll give you the answer in uh, maybe uh, announcement is like, like uh, June or something. And then the, uh, students can come to our university in uh, next October. So the IMP is slightly different. So that uh, web application is a bit late compared to the MEC scholarships, but this is kind of the uh, uh, schedule of the, these uh, scholarships. <clears throat> So uh, this is the final uh, page, and then the example necessary documents is supported applications like here, but all these uh, things are you can get from the website, so please check one by one. And if you have any questions related to my presentation or like uh, administrative work or some uh, scholarships, please contact the IFSO, IFSO, hyphen civil at YNESGP, you can have any questions here. All right, so uh, here is, uh, uh, if you have more questions, uh, more uh, information, please get it from YNU Global or any IUI. And then we're looking forward to wake up you in Yokohama. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat> Um, thank you, Professor, for a very uh, insightful presentation. Uh, like Professor has mentioned in his presentation, Yokohama National University is a very esteemed institution, which is renowned for its commitment to academic excellence and motivation. And today we are so uh, lucky to have Professor Suzuki's expertise in the field of civil engineering. And without any delay, we can look into the q and portal. So, uh, uh, one student wants to know is if he needs to get the next scholarship for graduate degree before they apply to the university. Um, for the uh, the next scholarship, we have two programs: one for masters and one for the um, the pro, uh, grad uh, pro, uh, the PhD course. And then uh, also in Japan is we can enter the from the Octo uh, October. So even the students are still in an um, undergrad or a master course, you can just apply to our program. There's no problem. Okay, thank you, Professor. And about uh, like regarding various other scholarships besides Mixed and World Bank and the other ADB scholarship which you have mentioned, are there anything from Yokohama National University? Um. Actually, we don't have such, they have good support, but uh, you have university, you have some changing year by year, but uh, um, some, you can check our website, but sometimes we have uh, like uh, faculty members who want to have, uh, you mean uh, faculty member in India don't have a PhD or a PhD degree yet. Uh, for those, uh, the faculty member, we have some support, but not much as a uh, max scholarship, but it's very uh, uh, limited. Okay, thank you. Uh, since we are also dealing with study and work in Japan, there are a few uh, individuals who want to know about the postdoc positions in the mm -hmm. university. So do you have anything for that? Uh, actually, postdoc is a bit difficult in uh, a national university okay. because uh, uh, university don't have uh, any uh, support about the postdoc. So if the professors have some uh, research fund to hire the international students, it's possible. So it depends on the professors. So it's okay. depend on the, some uh, topics or you know, some uh, duration. Luckily, they have uh, some uh, fund from the like uh, outside we can carry it, but uh, it's kind of rare case, I think. Okay, thank you, Professor. Yes, usually the postdoc positions in the universities are with the labs and the professor. So if anyone is interested, they can contact the professor. Yeah, yeah. And it's also uh, preferable if you already have some external scholarships like JSPS or the other yeah, grants. Yeah. If you come with that, then like any professor would be, most of the professors would be uh, willing to take you in yeah. their lab. Yeah. 
Yeah, JSPS is really good, you know, good uh, scholarship. And then uh, even there's uh, like a young researcher, uh, young researcher programs, uh, lots of pro programs. And the JSPS is really good in support and also adding some uh, research found itself. So yeah, after getting PhD, I recommend to take a, a, a submit to the JSPS. That is really good, uh, good uh, support, uh, supportive. Oh, yes, thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. And to look at other questions. So are there any collaborative relations with Indian universities? So can students come as exchange students here? Yeah, up uh, to, yeah, a lot of the university, uh, to me. Yeah, I, I'm not so related to them, but uh, some uh, some uh, faculty members will go to the India and they have some, uh, I know, presenting like this and then again, some collaboration. So, yes, but I'm uh, sorry, I could not uh, remember. Um, if there's any uh, interest, please check my, our, our website. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you, Professor. So let's take one last question. So if a student is interested in the civil engineering department or the geotechnology, which you have mentioned, so what topics would you say would add uh, preference to the application? So um, when uh, uh, even not in not only engineering, but uh, like other field, uh, maybe better to contact the professors because especially for PhD work, well, it's not a master, so you have need, need more higher like a level is needed. So the mm -hmm. there are some you know if there is a miss judge miss you know gap, gap between the students and the professor it's very you know good so before the coming to or before applying to the our university i recommend to contact the professors and have some communication with them especially about the research topic yes okay uh, thank you professor for okay. assisting us with the in the q and a session so i hope students have taken the full advantage of your expertise and it, just to conclude with the yokohama national university i would say that the institute uh, of urban innovation uh, is very famous in the department, is a very famous department and the institute also specializes in civil engineering and urban planning because there are many students, uh, especially from the IITs who are uh, directly sent to the Yokohama National mm -hmm. University to do their research. So I hope students can take advantage of your details in the presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for much. joining us today. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so next on the agenda, we have uh, Osaka University. So it's uh, Osaka University's turn. It is an esteemed institution which is renowned for its commitment to academic excellence and global engagement. With a history spanning over a century, Osaka University has established itself as a leader in research and education, attracting bright minds from all corners of the globe. So today we are privileged to have Professor uh, Zhang Sisi from the Center of Global Initiatives at Osaka University. Uh, her expertise and experience in international education and admissions will provide valuable insights into the admission process of the university. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Hi, everyone. This is Sisi from, uh, university, from Osaka University, from the Center for Global Initiatives. Okay, let me share my screen. Mm. Here is today's outline. Uh, we will have general introductions on Osaka University and undergraduate and graduate programs and admissions about that. And then support and services from, uh, from OU for international student. And the final one will be our uh, degree programs in English. Today we have, uh, we, we have invited two of our faculties from our uh, the School of Human Sciences to, uh, to give us an uh, introduction on international undergraduate degree program. Okay, first is the location. Um, Osaka is uh, located in Western Japan. Here you can see its neighbors, Kobe, Kyoto, and Nara. And there are, um, I believe there are some things you may not know about Osaka. Uh, here, I just want to emphasize one point as on the left, uh, left side. Uh, Osaka University has been ranked to the uh, for, for more than three years as the uh, most livable city in the world um, by the high scores covering stability, healthcare and culture, culture and environment, education, infrastructure. And we have our three main campuses are located in northern part of Osaka. Uh, they are very close to each other and very easily accessible with our uh, free shuttle buses and as well as public transportations. Uh, we have 11 undergraduate schools and 15 graduate schools at, um, 
they cover uh, here you can see uh, they call this include uh, letters um, social sciences dentistry medicine it uh, laws and economics and others i believe you can find what you like here in osaka university As a comprehensive research university here in Japan, uh, not only our undergrad schools and graduate schools, we also have, um, as you can see here, we also have a research institute and centers and facilities and university labor libraries and hospitals and also four overseas centers. And most of our students take their classes in Japanese. Um, but we also provide English uh, in English um, programs uh, programs uh, for our uh, in international student as well as our uh, Japanese student. Here you can see we uh, we provide two programs uh, for the undergraduate level. Uh, one is um, human science program that is a uh, fully that is entirely uh, conducted in English. The other one is international undergrad science program. Um, we have now we have three majors inside chemistry, physics and math. Uh, in our graduate level, we have uh, we provide uh, eight, we provide more uh, programs in English. Now we have 13 programs in English. Okay, for those uh, interested in studying at Undergrad level, this slide explains different admission pathways for you. Uh, you can choose, uh, you can come here as a Japanese uh, of government sponsored student and take uh, uh, Japanese education for one year and then take uh, entrance exams at any undergrad schools. For this option, um, please refer to the Jap Japanese embassies or consulates in your country or region. We also have uh, we also have uh, entrance exam examinations for privately funded students. For this, you need to take EJU and also TOEFL and send paper applications. And then take uh, entrance exams at Osaka University. If you are accepted, you will directly enroll into a program. However, as uh, if um, if you are living overseas and completed high, high, uh, high school overseas, we have a special entrance examination that allows you to apply online without coming to Osaka University. Here is this one. If you are interested in this program, you can uh, get more information to this program website. And these two programs are uh, the ones I just introduced. Uh, later, we will, uh, our faculties from the School of Human Sciences will give our Detail, give us detailed introductions to this program. Okay, here you can see, uh, you can see from the screen we have uh, eight, we have 13 uh, graduate programs in English. Uh, that covers a wide range of discipline in science, uh, engineering, uh, engineering science, information science, technology, and economics. And here is our graduate graduate admission. Students can use our researcher database to find their supervisor by research area or by department. And in order to help our students to figure out the flow of our uh, admissions and find their supervisors, we have admissions assistant desk, uh, we also called as AAD. All the materials can be just submitted online, which is very clear and convenient. Once the student receives the provisional acceptance from the supervisor, they can follow the admission process for each school. And entrance for the entrance exams are conducted, uh, are conducted by each graduate school. Uh, usually there will be document screening and written exam and interviews. And once you're enrolled, you will come uh, from April or October. Okay, here, uh, as for the tuition fee, it costs about, uh, Osaka University, the same with other national, national universities in Japan, the tuition fee uh, per year is um, 5,035, uh, 5,035, uh, 5, uh, I'm sorry, 535,000 Japanese yen. And uh, this will be per year. For the enrollment fee and entry fee, then they will just, uh, it just be paid for only once. And also uh, to, there are tuition fee waiver and you can apply for it tw twice a year. 
Okay. For student, uh, for student that's struggling with financial program problems and uh, difficulties, we also have financial aid, aid including here uh, Japanese government scholarships and also some individual, uh, some scholarships from organizations and our alumni um, from each each schools. That will be uh, this will be after enrollment, and also for other for some other scholarships, you can check JASO brochure to get, uh, uh, to get uh, more information on that. Okay, about dormitories. Um, we provide dormitories for our international students. Uh, usually they live in the dorms on the first year. Um, and we also have office on campus that help you finding other apartment uh, from, the, from the second year. Our dorms are equipped, uh, as you can see here, uh, with furniture and appliances. You can just move into the dorm. Um, the first day you arrive in Japan with just a suitcase. Okay, for, for more information about Osaka University, please visit our website. And you can also find us on social medias like uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also uh, YouTube channels. If you have further questions about uh, admissions or um, our programs, please contact us at this email address. Okay, I will pass forward my screen to our faculties from the, uh, from the School of Human Sciences. Okay, uh, well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, Thank Sensei. And uh, I wish you all a warm welcome and uh, in this virtual visit to uh, Osaka University, um, well, undergraduate program in human sciences. I will share a uh, PowerPoint presentation. Okay, great. Uh, so first, um, I don't have a lot of time, but I will try to just give you some glimpses into uh, how, uh, and, you know, study in human sciences, uh, program is and why you would be interested in coming uh, or applying uh, for it. So there is a lot of confusion uh, every time among students uh, what human sciences actually mean. And I just want to say uh, briefly that human sciences um, is an interdisciplinary approach uh, towards studying and understanding the world. And uh, in that sense, we combine different disciplines so sociology, philosophy, uh, uh, psychology, um, anthropology, and uh, political science. So basically our program is interdisciplinary and um, in that sense, uh, first two years you have, uh, of course, uh, foundational courses that are interdisciplinary, but then from your third year, you can actually uh, choose one of the research focuses that we have. And we have three research uh, focuses that I will talk about uh, now. Uh, diversity and inclusion studies is uh, good for all of you who want to actually study uh, matters of equality, participation, and inclusion of individuals who are differently uh, located in the society, right? And this uh, research focus is connected to UNESCO Chair in Global Health and Education. Uh, the second one is Japan Studies. For all of you who would like to uh, study more closely about uh, Japanese uh, culture to, through, uh, well, looking at different uh, social systems, institutions, uh, is global. And then the third um, research focus would be uh, political and global studies, where you can actually study domestic, international politics and political economy, uh, diplomacy, etc. So it's all encompassing in, in many ways. Uh, as for how the classes look like, we actually uh, have a fairly, let's say, a small group of students which allow you to actually fully, well, express yourself and be uh, basically uh, uh, have very smooth interaction with faculty members. So you are not just a one number and, you know, among other students, uh, actually, we, know, we get to know you very well. Uh, and we foster a learner-centered approach, which means that you have actually a lot of independence and agency when it comes to your studies. So for instance, uh, we do offer you, for example, when you're a second year, you can conduct a research project grant. Um, you can come up with proposal and receive uh, 
basically grants from the university. You can study abroad in your third year. Uh, and at the end of your studies, you will conduct an independent uh, graduation project. So you will write an undergraduate uh, dissertation on the topic that you choose that is within uh, the disciplines that we, uh, uh, well, uh, work on uh, in the program. Another thing is that there are many uh, ways to engage with uh, students uh, and, uh, well, uh, members of Japanese society even outside of the program. So there, there is a, a support uh, infrastructure through health and counseling, uh, homestay, brother and sister program, and uh, international exchange uh, office support if you need any additional uh, support, for example, uh, regarding um, internships or any let's say, uh, professional plans you might have. Uh, our program is very diverse. Not only the student body is diverse, but also we have professors from uh, Latin America, uh, Europe, Asia. So it's really diverse. Uh, and we are uh, especially proud of our student council, uh, that is student body that organizes different uh, festivals, events, uh, and helps uh, students uh, get uh, closer and um, uh, have a very lively uh, social life. Uh, another uh, aspect of our program is that we also tend to give students uh, necessary life skills. So we do have uh, different seminars on so socio-emotional intelligence, uh, information literacy, and negotiation and influence. So this is something that you can actually use uh, later on in your career. So now you might wonder where do our students go once they uh, graduate. So usually two thirds of students uh, go for a corporate um, uh, path, career path. And here are uh, some uh, companies or organizations where, where, they, uh, where our uh, alumni work. And the one third of students go for graduate studies. And usually these are prestigious universities, as you might see. We also have students going to also Harvard. It's not place here, but that also uh, is the case. Uh, now I would like to tell you a few uh, words about the procedures. So basically, if you would like to uh, apply for the next academic year, so on December 1st, 2023, uh, the application period opens and uh, by January uh, 5th, 2024, you should actually uh, register your application and uh, pay the uh, fee. And by January 12th, we should actually receive your application uh, by mail. And uh, usually uh, February 18th is where we actually notify uh, candidates about uh, interviews and uh, February through early March, we conduct interviews, and then in late March 2024, we notify uh, the training results by email, and by May 8th, uh, we, you have to actually reply to our uh, offers. Uh, then June 6th, you need to pay enrollment fees and apply for visa, and then for students who are um, having to complete their IB program, uh, that will happen in July, then you will submit your results to us, and August is for A-level uh, A-level students and they will submit uh, their results to us. And then finally, uh, basically uh, late September to October, you are uh, ready to move into the dorm and then classes start in October. Um, previous presentation talked uh, about um, basically cost. I'm not going to get uh, into too many details. Uh, so here, basically you have the entrance fee, it's around uh, $1,300 uh, yearly tuition as well. If you translate it into dollars, it's almost $4,000. As for living expenses, this is an estimate uh, of, let's say, $800 and uh, accommodation is around $170. Uh, and of course, you have here uh, included utilities, insurance, medical uh, uh, insurance, transportation, and meals. As for accommodation, as uh, you already heard, we guarantee uh, actually the on-campus dormitory during the first year, then you would have to move and uh, individual rooms are very well equipped with uh, you know everything you need, bed, desk, uh, shower, uh, kitchenette. Uh, so uh, this is uh, as for the logistical part of your life in Japan. Uh, if you have any more questions or you would like to see how students live looks like at HUS, please go to our G30 HUS uh, Student Council uh, YouTube channel or Instagram page or simply 
uh, reach out to us um, through the email that is uh, written here uh, below. And thank you very much for your attention. And I will leave the uh, floor to your questions if you have any. And thank you again. Thank you, Professor Chang and Alexandra, Professor Alexandra, for sharing your insights uh, into the admission process of the Osaka University. I'm, I'm sure it has helped students a lot. We can look at a few questions in the Q&A portal. Uh, so a student wants to know if there is any degree in the sports management. Uh, are you aware of any such programs? Uh, well, I am sorry, I cannot say anything about that, but maybe Zeng Sensei has some more information. Actually, we don't have um, we don't have uh, have degree programs in sports management, but we have we have something related to management. <laughs> maybe more like uh, programs in ec economic schools. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Professor. So I think most of these details you can students can find it on the website. So if they're interested in any particular course, so I would suggest them to go onto the website and look into it. Yeah, um, right. um, can go to our website because we we shared our information, but there are like uh, some detailed information about what kind of field we have. Um, but I think oh, I'm sorry. Um, in related to this one, I'd like to answer to another question that was writing on it. Um, okay. I think there's a question about if there are any information technology taught mm -hmm. at undergraduate level at Osaka University. Uh, for this one, um, actually, um, international uh, information and uh, technology that were very strong. Uh, I think one of the very strong point, a strong field here in Osaka University. We have um, uh, electronic and in information engineering in our undergrad school of engineering and also uh, information and computer science, including like computer science and software science and, and mathematical science. Um, we also have this one in our uh, undergrad school of engineering science. And at, at the, uh, yeah, this is at the undergrad level. And at the graduate level, we have uh, the graduate school for um, information in, and technology. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor. And the next question is, so usually when people go for management courses abroad, uh, they require GRE or GMAT. So is it the same in case of Osaka University as well? Or it, it's just if a research proposal is enough? Um, is that the question for me? I'm sorry. Uh, it is a question in the, uh, I think any one of you can answer. So it is about management courses and in the field of economics. So what, what are the qualifications and like some other skills which are uh, demanded for this course? Uh, I, I have no information. I'm sorry on that, at least uh, on my end. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, is it the undergraduate program or um, application uh, for undergrad school or graduate school? Uh, it is a graduate school program in management and economics. Okay, for uh, because we have a, a graduate school of um, in economics, the, the requirements actually is a little bit uh, is, is different from programs for but for for economics, um, if you want to study English, we have a sustainable economic program. Um, I think uh, every year we have about a, several about six to ten students can be enrolled in English uh, in this English program. That is the only only um english programs in social science uh social science in the uh, for the graduate level and also um if it's not english program for other programs in economic schools you need um i think we need you know, the english um first the japanese proficiency should be above and n2 jltt n2 and also uh English proficiency, if you have some, some like materials that can show your English proficiency, that can be um, extra, um, like, like points for applications. Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor. And uh, one last question. Is there any med med courses on medicine at the university if a student wants to become a doctor? So can they pursue uh, in the School of Medicine in the university? 
Uh, yeah, we have medical medical school and um, and also in our the graduate in our graduate school of medicine we have international students here. But um, if you want to grad if you want to be a doctor in Japan after graduate graduate from from medical school, uh, there will be a requirement on a national uh, national like doctors uh, doctor exams like certificate. So only if you um, only if you pass that that uh, certificate certificate, um, you can become a doctor in Japan. That is a requirement. Okay. Oh yes. So usually it is quite uh, challenging to pursue uh, medicine courses here, and also even in the scholarship. For example, Mexico they do not have any uh, specific scholarship to come and study uh, in the field of medicine. But if a student is interested in other graduate schools like bioengineering or biomedical engineering, I think they can uh, proceed. Yeah, right. Because uh, bioengineering and also uh, uh, like uh, biotechnology is also are uh, also very, uh, very popular programs for international students here at Osaka University, and we have scholarships both uh, at, the, at the university level and also at the school level for international student. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor. So, can I ask one last question? Okay. Uh, so, besides the academics, what are some notable extracurricular activities that Osaka University offers? Excuse me, could you please repeat your question? Uh, what are some notable extracurricular activities that are uh, available in the university? Alex Sensen, could you please decide this one? Uh, sure. Well, there are many uh, different circles where students can basically participate based on their interest. It can be uh, sports circles or let's say debating circles or um, negotiation circles. So there are many different ways in which you can um, find peers not only among students within the program but also other international students or Japanese students. So basically you have the best of both worlds. You're in Japan but you're also uh, in a very international environment. So uh, this would be one example that is I would say the most prominent one. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor. So thank you once again for joining us in today's webinar and uh, your presentations have given us a deeper understanding into the admission process, including important dates, requirements and other procedures. So if students are looking into the uh, into getting admission in the Osaka University, please contact the information provided in the chat box. So thank you, professors, for joining. Uh, with this, we can proceed to the next university. So next university we have is the K uh, Kyoto University of Advanced Sciences. And Kyoto University of Advanced Sciences is a well-reputed university in Japan. It, when we look back on its 50-year history, uh, it's, uh, it, it is considered as academic heartland of Japan. And to provide us more details into the university admission process, I invite Mr. Takeda from the international office, the director of the international office, to give us a brief overview of the university. Hello, everyone. Um, namaste, everyone. My name is Takeda. I work at the Kyoto University of Advanced Science of Faculty of Engineering as an international uh, uh, office director. Today, I, I'm really pleased to talk about you know, our exciting engineering programs uh, that covers you know, me mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and computer science in just one big package. And uh, needless to say, this is an international program that is entirely taught in, in our, excuse me, are taught in English language, not in the Japanese language, for the benefits you know, for of international students like you, or who are already or who in, in English language. And uh, today, our, today I will be covering our, you know, what, what exactly we do, or uh, where exactly we are in, in Japan, and also our, uh, what exactly we do in, uh, in our curriculum of engineering, and also are followed by the admission um, process and the tuition fees and the scholarships at the end.
Okay. Uh, allow me to just get back to the uh, what I want, what I well, I, I want to, wanted to you know, talk about it originally, and so there are so many reasons that you can uh, consider the Japan as your study uh, destinations in, in Japan, especially Kyoto. Uh, in fact, uh, there be uh, approximately uh, there are um, two thousand Indians and who migrated to Japan. And obviously, and, uh, most of them are uh, engineering related, engineers related work, and. Uh, I hope you can take this as a kind of encouragement news for you if you're interested in learning about engineering in Japan. And uh, uh, these are beautiful photos and taken uh, out of the city, our city of Kyoto, our uh, city of Kyoto. Uh, if you take a look at the map in, on the right hand side, you see our, where is Kyoto located. In that, with Actually, Kyoto is a, a centrally located in Japan uh, with great access to uh, two major cities like Osaka and uh, Tokyo, that has international airports. Um, Oh, just so, uh, just um, just so for your information, uh, two months ago I was in Mumbai in, in India, and so, uh, I I also had to travel from Japan to uh, Mumbai, and it, it would only take you know, thirteen minutes, uh, thirteen hours in the flight, and uh, probably this would be um, uh, much shorter than uh, you expected and physical uh, for physical distance. And, uh, again, and they, I I hope you can you know, this news can be taken as a sort of encouragement encouragement for you or for you or when you consider Japan as your study destination. A um, bit about the Kyoto University of uh, Advanced Science, uh, founded in 1969. It offers, um, it has uh, 3,600 students and the Japanese government accredited private university. Means that the engineering degree that you are earned with us uh, on our programs can be converted to uh, any institutions in the world, in the UK, in the US, uh, in Australia, of course, in, in India for more advanced coursework after graduation. And offers programs at five faculty, uh, five undergraduate colleges. You know, offers programs and also five postgraduate schools. At you know, we are uh, have uh, two hundred seventy are international students. You know, most of them are obviously you know, engineering school students. And uh, let me talk about the you know, faculty of engineering. Our uh, yes, you know, program is called mechanical electrical system engineering. Our uh, and we have thirty four different countries. Our uh, we have students and uh, from thirty four different countries. And what we are uh, let me um uh, to make a longer story short, what exactly we do is a. Uh, are computing and the data processing and the mechanical engineering, electrical and electrical in, in engineering in just in big one package on the same program. Uh, again, you don't have to choose one of them. Uh, actually, our as a student, as a, our students, you be cover. You need to be our ex have exposure to all these uh, three important components on the same program. So once you enroll on a program. Uh, because of the uniqueness of our uh, engineering program, where you can learn about mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and computer science at the same time, uh, we have been so fortunate to see a growing number of international uh, Indian students and are, to, are decided to, to enroll our, on our program. Um, okay. And the, the culmination of a program is the capstone project. Um, that is straight, uh, that is uh, consider this. Uh, you can consider this an intensive internship program. But the big difference is, is comes within a regular engineering program, not outside of curriculum, uh, unlike traditional internship programs. And and also the another big difference is that this stretches over you know, for over two years, not just two months. Um, uh, briefly, uh, what you do is, uh, is uh, to have a great opportunity to work closely with a professional engineer who now currently work in the industry as a professional engineer. And uh, you are, have a problem statement from them, 
and uh, you learn about it. And then uh, as a student, you are you work on their solution, uh, work on the uh, solutions to or to their issues, or problems of uh, professional engineers. And uh, naturally, you'll be expected to develop your practical skills, knowledge, and um, uh, that you can take advantage even from the day one you joined our companies. Uh, I'm so sorry, Professor. Uh, yes. I'm sorry to disturb you. I think the slides are not changing. Can you? Really? Uh, what yes. Happened? Okay, uh, thank yes. you. Thank you for. Oh, okay. Thank you for reminding me of that. But anyway, um, it's not in the slideshow as well. So, really? Oh, uh, yes, now it's okay. Oh. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, let me stop my uh, presentation and because I'd like to invite Abhiraj Shin here. Uh, he can talk about the uh, capstone project in detail in, uh, on behalf of uh, KUS. Abhi are, you, Abhi, are you there? Okay. Am I whispering? Uh, yes, yes, you are visible. You can proceed. Okay, are Abby, are would you yes. or would you start sharing the screen with right? Thank you. Is the screen visible? Actually, no. I think Professor, can you please stop sharing your screen so that we can right, see Abhi right, Right. Yes, it's okay. It's okay now? Yes, yes, you can start. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Taketa-san, for that wonderful introduction to our university and our engineering program. So hello, everybody. I am Abhiraj Singh, a second year undergraduate student in the Faculty of Engineering. And today, through this presentation, I would like to give um, you know, uh, my narrate my brief journey uh, from an engineering aspirant to a student at KUAS and uh, how my learning experience has been till now. So starting with how I chose Japan is um, I have been always, you know, passionate about uh, machines, especially automotive engineering since childhood. And um, as a passive listener, I usually have, uh, uh, heard about how wonderful Japan is uh, for opportunities as an engineer, as well as, um, you know, um, how culturally, you know, well-rooted heritage and culture it has. So this fascinated me to learn more about Japan while I took uh, my, um, I chose my third language, Japanese, in school when I was in grade six. And through that, um, there are, you know, uh, there are excellent uh, foundations such as Japan Foundation, Mozai, which, uh, which promote Japanese culture in India. So, uh, of course, like through my curriculum and through those, you know, uh, experiences such as origami, photography and stuff, I got to learn about uh, history and culture of Japan. Then, uh, fortunately, in, when I was in class 10th, I um, got to promote, I got an opportunity to um, represent my school and India of, on a student exchange program, uh, which was organized by Hako Foundation, which was my first trip for 15 days to Japan, and which I visited Tokyo, Kyoto, and Nasu. So through that, uh, that visit was actually an eye opener. So whatever I had learned till now, uh, till then about, um, you know, Japan, it was, it was actually more pleasant than that when you actually live those moments. I felt it to be a perfect blend of, you know, rich culture and technology. And I had made up my mind that if given, a, you know, the right opportunity, I would like to pursue my higher studies from Japan. 
Then coming to why I chose KUS. Uh, first and foremost, KUS has been established under uh, the able guidance of Mr. Shigenobu Nagamori, who is a well-known philanthropist and industrialist of Japan. He is uh, currently the chairman of Nide Corporation, which is a world famous, um, uh, famously known for um, motor manufacturing. Um, secondly, uh, the, the engineering program provided at uh, Kyoto University of Advanced Science is, um, uh, is unlike those traditional programs for you know, mechanical, civil, electrical engineering, but instead it's a combination of mechanical and electronics engineering. So what our department is known as system of mechanical and electrical engineering, or what that branch is more commonly known as uh, mechatronics engineering, which is going to be a very demanding field in subsequent years. When you know with the rise of electric vehicles and um, smart, uh, smart manufacturing technologies and stuff. Then third, we have a uh, you know, unique capstone project opportunity, which uh, gives students the right platform, which is actually introduced in third and fourth years. And it gives students the right platform to apply their knowledge of whatever they have learned through their initial years. So the broad idea is that students will get into groups and they'll receive uh, you know, project teams from uh, our collaborators, which are going to be industries. Uh, where they might be related to production or something or um, R&D research and stuff. And through this, it, uh, it teaches us two things. First of all, we finally get to apply what we have learned and problem solving and critical thinking. And of course, working in a group those kind of uh, values and skills. And in addition to that, we also learn about professionalism. After all, how we are going to deal with, you know, people once we enter the corporate world, when we enter the industry as engineers. So this I feel is an excellent program for such practical learning. Then coming to my experience as a student at KUS till now, so the main things are uh, that KUS has a well-structured curriculum. For example, uh, after you know, after getting done with um, some basic subjects of math, physics in the first years, we can uh, move on. We have plenty of choices to decide our specialization field. So broadly, we can specialize in four themes: that is, energy, artificial intelligence or information technology, energy, and manufacturing technology. Um, then besides, uh, besides, you know, excellent uh, uh, facilities, for example, labs, library, uh, cafeteria and all, we, uh, we also have, a, a, you know, a very well um, structured and uh, approach to all, all the, uh, to, um, to have, you know, uh, to have, uh, for students to have a smooth university life. For example, the international office, the student affairs center, educational affairs center, health center, and career support center, of course. So with this, I would like to come to a conclusion. And at last, I would like to say, if you choose to be with KUAS, you will have a great learning experience and wonderful platform for practical learning. My best wishes with you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Do you have anything to add to Abhira? Sure. Yes. Uh, just look, um, just a little quickly. Oh, th thank you, Harvey. And I, I would like to uh, share uh, with you the application, uh, application related our uh, materials and uh, information. Uh, um, and, and before I wrap up my presentation, so tuition is around fourteen thousand dollars a year. We run this program four years, not or uh, not for three years. And the cost of living in Kyoto is around nine hundred dollar uh, per month. In, uh, we have a very strong scholarship programs, and you can see, as you can see, in the form of um, uh, uh, tuition reduction by fifty percent, hundred percent, and a hundred percent in addition to a nine hundred dollar monthly stipend, which is the top scholarship. KUS top scholarship. 
And the who else is scholarship are recipients of, of these students? You know, one is are uh, starting with uh, Abhiraajshin, who just talked about his own experience at KUS, and and followed by Indonesian students and the students from Sweden, and Thailand, and uh, also from the United States. And uh, to apply for a program is like very easy. Uh, there are two easy steps. One, everything uh, uh, just for uh, your assurance that you can get everything done online in your application. Um, and then number two is the, uh, you can uh, if requested, you can you can participate. You'll be required to participate in uh, interviews and online with our professors. And, are uh, being asked a wide variety of questions, including our uh, subject in a specific question like physics and math. And uh, just a part of our application documents, uh, let me highlight in the C uh, 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 information related to a uh, CBSE, ICSC, IB, State Board predicted results. And uh, yeah, okay, US are more than welcome to take your CBSE scores and are uh, can be a pre your predicted results also uh, and, uh, from our uh, CBSC, ICSC, IB State Board, and uh, there are multiple or uh, application timelines. In the, uh, actually, we all have uh, three different windows for applications, and one is early entry that will start on October second, and uh, another another one is a start is a regular entry that will start on the December first. And a final entry that will start on uh, February fifth, and then twenty twenty four. All are all these three windows you know, go toward the same intake period of September twenty twenty four. If I pause here, and uh, so you can um, take a screenshot of this page, and uh, so that you can have um, or uh, you can visit our web uh, website to gain more information about um, our um, applications. Uh, just before I wrap up my presentations, uh, our, our, let me just summarize the benefits of choosing a KUS engineering. Number one is that our program is a highly modernized engineering program. Now, if you remember, uh, that comes in a big one package, uh, uh, in computer science, electrical, and mechanical engineering all combined. And our program is uh, actually goes world standard qualities. And, we partner with Ohio State University, Tafutsu University, Seoul National University, and right now we are um, now discussing our, our school, our university partnership, and our IIT Karampur also. And uh, the reason is that we recognize each other of uh, providing the highest quality of engineering education around the world. And number three, our programs entirely conducted in English language. Number four, we still offer you a great opportunity to learn the Japanese language intensively for two years that will help you um, linguistically explore job opportunities with the Japanese companies after graduation. And with all these strengths and benefits, you know, and naturally, or you can expect the same, or you can expect a greater job prospects after graduation as KUS engineering graduates. Again, if you are if you are interested, you'll be more than welcome to connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll pause here, and you can uh, take a screenshot again, and are uh, and the using uh, in order to use the URL so you are here. Okay, thank you very much uh, for, for your kind attention. I'd let the floor open to your question. Uh, thank you, Professor, and thank you, Mr. Abhiraj. It was really nice to have a student experience of the university. So let's look at some of the questions. Uh, can we apply using EJU scores for KUS engineering undergraduate programs? Yes, EJU, yes, EJ is acceptable, completely acceptable with no major issues. And I, uh, I really uh, encourage you to use an EJU. Although we don't consider your Japanese language ability uh, are, I would say, at all, uh, at all, so because of our, our programs and international programs. Oh, yes, thank you. 
and there's one question because the next embassy recommended scholarship deadline is already over so are there is there still any chance for the students to get next scholarship for october intake probably it's not our in, in our capacity to answer that question because the, you might want to ask that question specifically to a mixed uh, yes, that's right. So maybe I think the student wants to know about the university recommended max scholarship. So in case a student comes in September, do you recommend, like, are there any university recommended max scholarships? Available? Um, yes. And if you're interested, you can always uh, contact us at the uh, email at admission at kus.ac.jp, admission at kus.ac with that specific question. We can uh, discuss it. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Takeda. And also, what is it based on the past uh, student cutoff list? So, what I, what is the cutoff mark for the students? Uh, in in what kind of standardized test so results? I think the student yeah the student did not mention any details, but usually uh, in the standardized test results, like for example EJU, which you were mentioning, what are uh, the cutoff scores? Actually, uh, actually, uh, good, the good news is that we don't set any cutoff scores in any kind of a standardized test or national, nationally standard, nationally administered test. Um, the same thing is true with the CBSE score, ICSE score, state board exams also. So, um, anyone with any scores will be uh, highly encouraged to apply for KUS. So we. And the good news, we take the holistic reviewing process to make our decisions for admission and also scholarship, unlike some traditional schools and schools around the world. Okay, thank you. That's very great to hear. And uh, another question is, how long does the admission process typically take? So when can the student receive the admission decision? Uh, um, approximately three months you know, from the period that you apply and then you can yeah, before you are, are you get your results you know, for admissions and that scholarship okay so maybe i'll ask this question to abhiraj thank you mr takeda so what are some of the challenges or areas where you think like you have encountered in the university of course this is every <laughs> question yes Challenges, uh, challenge areas uh, in university life, right? Yes. So how did you overcome that? Yeah. Maybe you're always talking about the positive things, but maybe there might mm -hmm. be something which, which you came across and university might have helped you or. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Especially talking about uh, the support that we get from the university. So like I had mentioned about um, you know, the well-structured approach that university has to ensure a smooth, uh, you know, student life, for example, the international office and all those centers like that. So I would like to share a, you know, brief anecdote about um, when um, my first semester was actually online because of the COVID time. And um, so when I was, you know, making up all the preparation to come in uh, finally during that semester break, um, there was there was still a lot of uncertainties, you know, that um, I had to get myself quarantined and all that stuff. And then first of all, yeah, then coming in here, how to managing from, you know, all the transportation and, you know, getting to university at last. So in that, the international office had been very helpful and, you know, without, uh, you know, even from their side it, itself. So we had, you know, um, a teams group for all the students who are expected to come in that month. And um, accordingly, the international office would be posting regular, uh, you know, uh, updates from the government as well as how they are, uh, you know, going to manage your routes and, um, you know, our accommodation if we are required to have some quarantine or we are directly going to approach the university. So in that time, yes, the international office was very helpful. and. Uh, besides that, in general, for example, if I have inquiries about my credit requirements and the courses that I should select and all, um, educational affairs is very helpful for that. And of course, talking about career opportunities, career support, uh, support center is uh, an excellent place. Uh, recently, we, have, we are having recruitments for uh, summer break internships and um, 
And yeah, actually, uh, I, I I guess uh, Takeda san mentioned in his uh, presentation about 97% of the applicants got, uh, you know, their placement through in um, domestic as well as overseas internship opportunities. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. Uh, thank you for summing up in in like few minutes. So thank you very much, Mr. Takeda and Mr. Abhirat for joining us in today's webinar. Uh, yeah. It was very insightful to have you. And uh, that brings us to the end of today's webinar on studying and working in Japan. We hope that the presentations from all the esteemed universities have provided you with valuable information and a deeper understanding of the educational opportunities in Japan. So we extend our heartful gratitude to all the panelists and university representatives for their time, expertise, and comprehensive presentations. So your insights have undoubtedly inspired and motivated our attendees. And we would also like to express our appreciation to the participants who have actively engaged in the Q&A session. So that's all for today's webinar. Thank you for joining us uh, today. And we wish you all the very best in your educational endeavors.